my truth is that spirit can only do for us what it can do through us. My truth is that life doesn't come to you, it comes from you. My truth is if you don't believe you actually can, you will be a prisoner to that for the rest of your life because there is only one power. Gandhi used it, Hitler used it, and you're using it right now. And when we subscribe to these toxic myths around money, around love, around whatever we are subscribing them to, we just get more of that because we live in a universe that is governed by laws. The law of gravity none of us have an issue with. Money, mindset, the three toxic myths of scarcity and how they have invaded our consciousness. Ooh, ooh, rah! Blessings and blessings, everybody. My name is Preston Smiles, and I help people get free from the inside out, regardless of their external circumstances. And today I am pumped and excited to be talking to you about something that is near and dear to my heart, and that is money mindset and the myths, the toxic myths that most of us have been born into. Now, I wanna start by saying it is my belief that the universe, God, is one gigantic yes button. The universe, God, to me, does not speak English. It speaks frequency. And anything we are interested in grows. What we appreciate, appreciates. What we celebrate in ourselves and others gets repeated. What we focus on expands. And I also believe that we are social and historical beings born into beliefs and interpretations. These three toxic myths are beliefs and interpretations that all of us in the Western world were born into and for me, it is a part of what I undid, rewired, and unlearned in my process where I, at 33, was living with my mother. I made $36,000 that year. And then the following year, 150. The following year, 300,000. The following year, 600,000. The following year, 1 million. And I have not stopped. When I broke through these toxic myths, everything shifted and changed for me. So what I'm about to talk to you about is near and dear to my heart because just next week, I'm gonna be buying my mom her first ever brand new house built from the ground up just for her. And so I dare you to lean in. I dare you to take notes. I dare you to receive this transmission. My truth is that spirit can only do for us what it can do through us. My truth is that life doesn't come to you, it comes from you. My truth is if you don't believe you actually can, you will be a prisoner to that for the rest of your life because there is only one power. Gandhi used it, Hitler used it, and you're using it right now. And when we subscribe to these toxic myths around money, around love, around whatever we are subscribing them to, we just get more of that because we live in a universe that is governed by laws. The law of gravity none of us have an issue with. And so toxic myth number one is there is not enough. I can't tell you how many mornings I've woken up thinking I didn't get enough sleep. I can't tell you how many days, halfway through the day, I said, there isn't enough time. I can't tell you, especially back in the day, how many times I judged people like Prince EA and Jay Shetty and certain people in my industry because I had a belief that there wasn't enough money or people to go around, that they were taking it all. 
This is a toxic myth and it pervades our society. The myth of there is not enough, not enough food, not enough water. Most of us have no problems with air. We know that there's enough air. But when we point the lens at time, when we point the lens at money, when we point the lens at food, when we point the lens at whatever we're pointing it at, the universe, God, Buddha, Krishna, Jesus, Allah, source, divine intelligence, just says yes. If that's what you're interested in, I'll give you more of that. And so if you want to shift this particular myth, I challenge you to start, I challenge you to start seeing and allowing yourself to experience the great fullness of life. There's more than enough air. Money is a promissory note. We just make it up. There's more than enough money. It's always flowing because it's currency and currency must float through the current. You want to change your life. Begin to catch all the places where you think there is not enough. I have coached countless people on the idea that there's not enough good men in their city. Let it land. I have coached countless people around the consciousness of there's not enough space on social media. There's too many coaches. The universe, God, spirit, Buddha, Krishna, source, divine intelligence can only do for you what it can do through you. And we are vibrational beings, divine power plants. And I challenge you not to let what's on you destroy or ruin what's in you. Because what's in you is the same stuff that the stars are made of. What's in you is God, isness, source. If we take a microscope and we break you down and break you down and break you down and break you down we will find no thing consciousness isness in a space no thing emptiness dancing and so you get to decide what that emptiness is does is the, does the emptiness live in a universe in a in a world where there isn't enough or where there is an abundance of trees an abundance of air, an abundance of humans. Remember, the universe will never be mocked, blocked, or denied. If a door closes, a window will open. If a window closes, another house will be built. It, the one power, can make a way out of no way but it is enacted by your belief. If you believe you can, if you believe there's enough, there will be enough. If you believe there is not enough, you will get what you are most interested in. That is how it works. <sighs> Myth number two is more is better. This idea has us never landing. I'm always, always chasing the next thing because I think that more is better. We want more money, a better car, a different mate. We're always constantly trying to get high on the next thing. We need this shirt. We need more pants, more followers, more comments, more booty, more biceps. What? Woo! We got ourselves caught up in the idea that more equals better. But the truth is, is that it's stopping us and blocking us from experiencing what we do have. And the universe, God, is only and always saying yes. So if you are coming from the consciousness 
of what I currently have isn't enough because I need that new thing, then the universe is going to match the scarcity underneath that, the lack underneath that, and give you more wanting, more desiring. But that doesn't feel good. The ego is a tricky bitch and a bottomless pit. It will never be satisfied. And so your job is to stop, drop, and roll into the now moment. Your job is to say yes to your yes and be here now. Your job is to vibrate in the frequency of fullness, checking and directing and finding out if your needs are actually met. So watch this. I have coached so many people who are so addicted to the next thing. And when I stop them and I say, let's find out what's really going on. Do you have enough water? Can you drink water now? Well, yes. Can you eat now? Yes. Do you have shelter now? Yes. Do you have friends and family and people who care about you now? Yes. Do you have the opportunity to listen to a podcast or watch a show on YouTube now? Yes. So what I hear you saying is that all your needs are met and yet you're operating as if you are strung out on some drug trying to get to the next thing. Slow down to the speed of wisdom and allow yourself to be here and you beat myth number two, which is more is better. Myth number three. This one hurts my heart because myth number three is it is what it is. And the implication with that is that I won't ever be able to change it. It's just the way it is. The moment I'm in just the way it is energy, I am going into apathy. I am going into, well, I'm screwed because my dad was screwed and his dad was screwed. Oh, I'm black, so there's no way out of this one. Oh, I'm a white male and the world is changing. I'm screwed. Whatever it is that you are believing cannot be shifted, cannot be changed, creates lack, limitation, and scarcity. And once again, the universe will always say yes to whatever you are most interested in. And your interest comes by way of your thoughts, feelings, and actions. If you are thinking, feeling and acting from the idea that the Mexicans are taking over and it is what it is, then you're going to get more of that whether it's true or not. If you are thinking and acting and speaking from I'll never make it because of my dyslexia, I'll never make it because of my nose. I'll never get there. I'll never have a partner. And it is what it is because I'm fat, because I'm X, because I'm Y. Whatever story you have, you instantly trap yourself in a prison, a self-made prison that does not serve you. And so myth number three, it is what it is and it can't be changed, is a toxic myth and a lie that blocks you from experiencing what is, which is everything on our planet is always moving, shifting, and changing. We can get with the flow or we can step out of the flow, but it is flowing. Your perception may have you believe that you are stuck, but the truth is, is that you're not the same person that you were last year or 10 years prior. Everything is moving, shifting, and changing, and anything is possible if you say so. And even if you don't say so, you still won't be the same person. You still won't be what your mom was or your dad was or the mistake you made in the quote-unquote divorce that happened and how X, Y, and Z. And you're so afraid to get into a new relationship because you think that you're going to end up like you did last time. You still can't, even if you tried. Money is everywhere and it's listening. Abundance is a state of being, not a number in your bank account. 
Abundance is a state of being and not a number in your bank account. When you tune into an attitude of gratitude and operate from abundance, knowing, knowing deep inside of you because you're researching, you're interested in by way of reality that there is enough. Some of you are paying your bills and still thinking that there's not enough money. Some of you just bought a coffee today. Some of you are watching or listening to this on an iPhone and you're still operating from the consciousness that there's not enough. And yet you have a thousand dollar phone that you continue to pay for. So just notice how your mind, the mind, is tricking you. You can bless the bills that you paid, or you can curse them by way of thinking that there's never enough. But somehow, some way, you keep eating, you keep drinking, you keep having a roof over your head, you keep being taken care of, you keep entertaining yourself through podcasts and videos and things of that nature. You, all your needs are met right now. I dare you to tune in to that frequency in this now moment and allow yourself to burst. into the goodness, into your divine birthright, which is joy. And so it is, so shall it be. I appreciate you all. Thank you for taking this ride with me. If this landed, if it resonated, if it stirred something up, I dare you, A, to listen to it again, B, to take notes, C, to do something about it right now in your life. Tune in. It's choice, not chance. And this beautiful dance we call life. And so it is. You don't want to do your plug? Press in podcast, watch it here, do that? You don't want to do that? Um, yeah, probably should. Um, if you're tuning in. And if you're tuning in through my podcast, through YouTube, through somewhere on the internet, I challenge you, I ask you to share this message.